Secretary McCarthy and Senator Schumer, we're at Fort McNair. Do you know what's going on? They have, okay, well, D.C. has requested the National Guard, and it's been denied by DOD. I'd like to know a good reason why it's been denied. We need them fast. We've all had to, I've never seen anything like this. We're like a third world country here. We had to run and evacuate the capital. They're, they have not denied it. I spoke to the Secretary of the Army. He's given a full okay to give the National Guard. He said it was not denied. I'm going to call up the effing Secretary of DOD. Here's the problem. It's not just that we see this video where you have the top Democrat in the Senate screaming and asking for support because their lives were at risk of being taken while they are at work. And while Chuck Schumer is on the phone screaming about America being a third world country, or it seemed like we were a third world country in that moment, the reality is there are a lot of moments where America shows up as underdeveloped, undeveloped, and mainly it accounts to when America is not checking white supremacy. The idea that the Senate and the Speaker of the House are sitting there on the phone with members of an administration begging for support for their lives because the President of the United States supporters are trying to kill them in Washington, D.C. sounds like the skit from a Brockheimer movie. But in actuality, it was January 6th. And I'm tired of people calling these people that perpetrated this crime against the Constitution treason, high treason, an attempted coup. I'm tired of people calling them hostages or peace or victims, as Donald Trump did. But those J6 warriors, they were warriors, but they were really more than anything else. They're victims of what happened. All they were doing is protesting a rigged election. That's what they were doing. And then the police say, go in, go in, go in, go in. How about Scaffold Joe, the guy on the scaffold? Or how about the big FBI guy or whatever, wherever he comes from? Go on in, everybody, go on in. What a setup that was. What a horrible, horrible thing. And you know, that blows two ways. That Victim? How are you a victim when 10 people die because of what happened on the Capitol in January the 6th? They're not victims. And when you call them warriors, as the past president, Donald Trump, did, you're implying exactly what we already know. They were at war with our country. You can't be a warrior unless you are experienced in the art of war, unless you are a trained, experienced soldier. And he said they were warriors three times. Saying the quiet part out loud is exactly what Donald Trump just did. And when people pretend that nothing happened, when nothing happened, tell the Smith family, tell the Lion family, tell all the cops who died because of what happened on January 6th. It is absolutely ridiculous for us to sit here and pretend that this party, the Republicans, are the party of law and order when they don't give a damn about all the shenanigans Donald Trump is up to. They're bragging that their friends, the Proud Boys, are in prison as prisoners of war. But they're, they're, they'll say out the same breath, out their same mouth, that no, this was a peaceful protest, First Amendment activities. Tell all these families that are missing dads, brothers, cousins, uncles, and friends because of idiots that wanted to raid the Capitol and stop a constitutional duty, duty of the vice president to certify the election. And when they realized the vice president was not on their side, the chant was, hang Mike Pence. What in the hell is peaceful about threatening to hang the vice president of the United States? Had these been black protesters, had these been black insurrectionists, had these been black people, this entire story would be completely different and the body count would be so much higher. I'm Mundell Robinson. I don't have the luxury that white people do where they get to rewrite history in real time.